Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Tuesday to you guys. I pray you all received sweet sleep last night. Woke up with bells and whistles on, ready to take on this new day. It's a day we've never seen before and a day that we will never see again. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey there, Harpy Juanita, Harpy Rainey, and Harpy Lamont, Harpy Troy, Harpy Yolanda, Harpy Eva, good morning. Heartbeat Evac, good morning. Heartbeat Alice, Heartbeats on Instagram, as well as the Heartbeats on YouTube. This morning, before we get started, let's all just lift up a prayer for those who are involved with the collapse of the Key Bridge over in Baltimore. If you have not turned on the news yet this morning, there was a ship that collided with part of the bridge, which caused the bridge to collapse. So, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you are God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you know all, you see all. And so we pray for the families, Lord Jesus, that this has uh, come in the, for the families that are involved with this, Lord Jesus. We pray that the search rescuers will find each and every person whose car collapsed with the bridge and that we will find them safe, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Um, so yeah, throughout the day, just make sure that you guys keep... Um, praying about that. I was trying to see what was the latest update um, on it before I came live. Um, they did say they had rescued two people, um, but they were still seeing cars uh, starting to you know, float up on the top. So let's just pray. They believe that it was seven cars that went down when the bridge went down. So keep that in your prayer on this morning. But Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to the Gathering of Hearts on this morning. I am Regina Banks, your GPS to wholeness, aka I'm the heart gatherer. And this morning, your daily dosage is a continuation of yesterday, the divine artistry of God, part two. The divine artistry of God, part two. So we opened up um, yesterday talking about Ephesians 2.10, that we are God's own workmanship, his handiwork, you know, like we are his um, masterpiece and that everything in our lives is orchestrated, it's divine, that it has a designated moment, that he has placed us on a path to do his good works. And so today we'll continue on in that, talking about his divine artistry and being as though today is Holy Tuesday, you know, this is the Holy Week, the most important week on a Christian's calendar. And today is Holy Tuesday. Today would be the day if we are following or walking along with Christ up to the cross. Today would be the day when he was ambushed and they tried to, you know, take uh, Jesus, but they weren't able to. Why? Because of the divine artistry of God. It wasn't time yet. He still had some way to go on this path to the cross. And so it's just amazing that not only looking at our own lives, but we can look back as we follow Christ this week, how God's hand has always been in everything, that it is the divine artistry of God that we do what we do. And so let's look at Jeremiah 29, 11 today, and I'll be reading it out of the voice translation. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the eternal, plans for peace, not evil, to give you a future and hope. And then it ends like this. It says, never forget that. I want to read that again because, you know, tra different translations say it, say it differently. But I want you to get this. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the eternal, plans for peace, not evil, to give you a future and hope. Never forget that. And these are words to actually to live by, to never forget the plan that God has for your life, that it's a plan of peace, that we ought to always be operating in peace, that that is the plan that God has for our lives. Not evil, but peace to give you a future, to always give you hope. And then he says, never forget that regardless of what you may be encountering in your life as I am speaking, never forget that the plan that God has for you includes peace. It does not include anything evil, but it, it includes giving you a hope, giving you future. And so here the children of Israel um, have been taken into exile 
by Nebuchadnezzar to Babylon um, from Jerusalem. And Jeremiah, he sends a word. He says this, pretty much he's saying, you know, make peace with where you are. He says, build houses, you know, move, um, uh, make homes for yourselves. Begin to intermingle with the people where you are. He says this, because you're going to be there for a minute. You know, sometimes when things are going on in our lives, we want to get right out of it, right? Nobody wants to deal with agony. Nobody wants to deal with disappointment. That's normal, right? And we'll pray about it. But sometimes God does not send breakthrough right away. So Jeremiah is saying, listen, you guys are going to be there for a minute. So you might as well get to know where you are. You might as well dwell with those that you are, you know, with. He says, interact with them, marry them, have children, begin to, to multiply, pursue peace and welfare of where you are, of where I sent you. He says this, he says, pray on its behalf to me. For if you begin to pray to me on its behalf, he says, then I will make peace for you where you are. Um, you will have peace for whatever it is that you are praying for. Then he says this, he says, watch out for the false prophets because I didn't send them. They are lying in my name. They're not telling the truth. They're giving you a false message. You know, sometimes when we're going through things, we're just looking for an answer. We're looking for a word from God. And because if you're not, you know, connected to the vine, if you are more in your situation than you are with God, you'll receive whatever a false prophet may be saying. Why? Because it sounds good. It gives you hope. But he says, wait a minute, look out now for the false prophets because they are lying in my name. It ain't true what they are telling you. He says, listen to the word that I have sent you. Thank you, Harpy Sherry, for the stars. Appreciate your support. He says this, you want the truth? Here it is. Here's the truth. You're going to be there for 70 years. Here's the truth. But remember what I said to you. Remember that I that that what I, I said, that I, I know what I'm doing. Remember what I said to you. Remember that I said that I have nothing but good things in store for you. That I know the plan that I have for you. This is what I want you to remember. He says this. You're going to be there for 70 years. Now, I pray that none of us have experienced anything for 70 years years but let's read between the lines what God is saying now where you are you might be there for a minute you know when you're waiting on God that's the time to learn a lesson that's the time to figure out why am I here that's the time to say okay Lord what is it that you want me to learn from this what am I supposed to get out of this you know I taught a message a couple weeks ago don't waste the wait it's in the wait that you begin to really understand really who God is you begin to understand what it is that he's doing in this way. When you understand who you are waiting for, it makes the wait better. It lets you know that this thing is going to end in a praise, but I got to get out of it what God wants me to get out of it. He says, you want the truth. Here it is. You're going to be there for 70 years. That's how long you're going to be there. He says, but when the time is up, he says, I'll come back and get you. I'll come back and take you back to where you belong. He says, this is my promise to you. In other words, I'm not going to leave you there, that there is a designated moment, that there is an appointed time for this thing to be over. The message version says it like this. Listen, I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you. You, not abandon you plans to give you the future that you hope for and so you've got to understand this that while you are waiting God knows what he's doing he tells the children of Israel he said listen make good of where you are stop complaining about it listen you are where you are you know how we like to say it is what it is he says this while you're there he says interact mingle with them in other words whatever the situation is that you are going through, make good out of it. Don't stand there and complain. Don't sit there and complain. What is it that I can be doing? I told you in wait, don't waste the wait, that you begin to serve. Serve your way out of this thing. How can you help somebody else as you're going through? How can you bless the name of Jesus anyway? How can you glorify God as you're waiting for God to come through for you? Again, God knows what he's doing. He doesn't need your help. He doesn't need 
need your opinion. He says, I know what I'm doing. And at the appointed time, I'm coming to rescue you. I'm coming to save the day. You can count on it. You have a promise from me. I'm going to read it again in the voice translation, that last part. Never forget that. Never forget that I know what I'm doing. Never forget that I know the plans that I have for your life. Remember on yesterday, we said that your life has already been pre-orchestrated. It's already been pre-planned. Listen, he says this, I've already done all of that. And everything that I'm doing is to put you on a path to do good works for me. So as you are going throughout the day, as you are thinking back on some of the things that you are dealing with presently, know this, know that God knows what he's doing. Know that God has not taken his hand off of your life. Know that God has his eye on your situation. Never forget that God wants you to stay in peace, that he wants you to keep hope alive because there is a future that is bright, but you've got to wait on God. You've got to wait for the appointed time for the designated moment. Never forget that God knows that he has a plan for your life and that if you would just get in alignment with the word of God for your life, you will see that this plan is going to unfold beautifully, that it's going to all work out for your good. Hey, listen, that's the daily dosage for today. The Divine Artistry of God Part 2. If you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel already, please do so because there you can find all of your dosages in one place. Follow me on social media platforms, God Wants Me Whole. Visit the website, GodWantsMeWhole.org. You know how we do this thing. Come on, let's say it together. Say, God Wants Me Whole. And I am, again, I'm Regina Banks, your GPS to wholeness, a.k.a. I'm the heart gatherer. I love you guys a bunch. Go out there. Have a spec while amazing day. Look out for falling blessings because they are falling all around you. And don't forget, please, please, please continue to pray for all of those that were involved in the collapse of the key bridge on this morning. They need our prayers and prayer changes things. Amen. Again, love you guys a bunch. We'll pick this up tomorrow morning as we continue on in the divine artistry of God. Love you guys.